Good afternoon, everybody. So today we will continue with our course, and we will start a new topic that is digital marketing or e-marketing. For those who are following your book, this is chapter eight of the course textbook. And besides uh, today's topic, I've received some mails. Well, some of you are wondering of how the exam will be like since this course has been partly restructured, it used to be 15 ECTS uh, uh, course, and now it's 7.5. So there have been some changes, and that also will reflect on how the exam will be like. So at the end of this uh, class, I will give some information about uh, the exam, but of course, we will still have some time to talk about that, and as you are, I think, in the last uh, lecture of this course, I will also give some remarks on how you can approach the exam questions and so on. But I will give some information today. So we have been discussing about digital business strategy. And uh, as I said uh, earlier, that we will look at different uh, functional areas you know, within an organization to see how uh, digital business strategy can be implemented. So we have looked at supply chain uh, management and how we can uh, apply digital technologies to improve or to increase efficiency and effectiveness of supply chains. We have also looked at uh, e-procurement. And today we will look at how digital technologies can help uh, in improving the performance of uh, marketing. And the reason we are looking at digital marketing is because in most modern organizations today, they are separate uh, digital uh, marketing plans. And that is because the digital technologies has brought about a brand new uh, business environment that the market space has completely changed. And that requires uh, organizations to respond according to the uh, new needs that the digital technologies has placed in the uh, market space. So a digital technology uh, marketing strategy will be included as part of the overall uh, marketing uh, strategy of an organization. But given the significance of digital technologies today, uh, we need to, uh, to, pay, to pay a much closer attention to how digital technologies can be used to enhance the marketing function within an organization. So like in the traditional uh, marketing, it always starts with the customer. So we recognize the fact that all uh, business organizations are thriving uh, to create and keep customers. So this is what we want at the end of the day. Uh, when we start a business, we want to create value that will attract customers. And we don't want to lose these customers. You want to maintain. You want to keep them and attract even more uh, customers. And this is our point of departure in this uh, uh, class that we are discussing with the view that the organizations that we are talking about want to use digital technologies in attracting uh, customers and keeping them and attracting even more uh, customers. And that's where marketing comes into, in the, into the frame. Of course, our understanding of what marketing is and the role of marketing has uh, evolved uh, over years. It used to be uh, perceived as a socioeconomic uh, activity happening in the markets and not in uh, business firms. And over time, I think around uh, 1920s, marketing became recognized as a, a distinct function within an organization. And for many years, it has been taken as synonymous as selling. But over time, we, we, we have recognized uh, marketing as a separate uh, function, but also a function that cuts across the entire uh, organization. So marketing is responsible for value creation, for value creation to all uh, stake, stakeholders of a business. But in this class, we will use this perspective of marketing, that marketing as a management process that is responsible for identifying, anticipating, 
and satisfying customer requirements profitably. So we'll pay much focus to, uh, to, to the role of marketing in identifying uh, customers, anticipating customers, and satisfying the needs of these uh, customers. But of course, we are not naive of the fact that uh, marketing performs uh, other or helps organization to reach other goals beyond uh, satisfying a customer. That we also have to consider other stakeholders, such as the societies in which business organizations uh, operate. Of course, we, you cannot ignore the investors, the people who inject their uh, funds in, in the hope of obtaining return for whatever they're investing in the uh, organization. But of course, for the purpose of this class, we will concentrate on the role of marketing uh, with respect to identification, anticipation, and satisfaction of uh, customers. So mark those uh, four uh, items, that identif identification of the customers, anticipation, satisfaction, and of course, in the end, we want to create profit for, for uh, an organization. But the question is, where do we find these customers? today. Increasingly, today, uh, you and I will agree that customers are online. This is where we, we, we find customers. At least, this is the kind, of, uh, the kind of world we are living today, that increasingly, more and more customers are found online. And these claims are not baseless. We have evidence uh, based on studies, data that we have today, it is true that more ca increasingly more customers now are online and more customer, uh, more uh, businesses or firms are interacting with their customers online. And these are some of the uh, statistics or just to raise your, your, your interest. Uh, how may, uh, the number of companies uh, that acquire customers uh, through uh, online platforms. In this case, it was Facebook. Also, there is a report that says companies that uh, blog get 55% more visitors to their site. Companies that are engaging in uh, inbound marketing, this is uh, something we discuss in uh, chapter two. They are likely to generate interest, that is leads, 75, uh, 70%. And this is not just for large companies. Even small companies are increasingly using online platforms to interact with uh, customers. And this is the reason why we are, try we are paying attention or we, we are spending some effort to discuss on how companies can create and implement uh, digital marketing strategy. So what is digital marketing? Digital marketing, of course, with reference to what marketing is, what we want to do with the digital marketing is to achieve marketing objectives through the use of electronic communications technology. So the same objectives uh, that we want to uh, identify, anticipate, and satisfy customer needs, but in this case, by using electronic communication uh, technology. So it's marketing, but we use digital technologies to achieve the marketing goals. There are three operational activities that the digital marketing is concerned with. And that is acquisition, that is acquiring uh, customers. We will discuss this. For instance, through uh, search engine optimization, that is increasing your visibility of your company uh, in the internet uh, space creating of partnerships, online ads, sponsorship, email marketing, and so on. So these are activities that are aimed at acquiring, attracting customers to your businesses. But we, we don't just want to increase, uh, to increase interest of customers. We want to convert these individuals that we attract to our uh, businesses into becoming real customers, and that is conversion that from attracting someone to your website to making them an actual uh, customer. And finally, we want to retain them. We don't want someone to buy from our uh, business just once, but we want them to repeat 
uh, their uh, uh, buying uh, with our company. So we want them to come back over and over again. And these are the main activities that uh, digital marketing uh, is concerned with, acquisition of customers, uh, convention, and retention, and growth. Growth in the sense that you mm -hmm. keep the customers you have, but also you make efforts to acquire more uh, customers. Now, these activities have to be managed. And this uh, bring, uh, brings us to, to the management processes that have to be uh, taken in order to achieve the, the, the three uh, activities that I have just uh, mentioned. We need to create a strategy. We need to know how we go about in implementing those uh, activities. But also we know that marketing cannot work in isolation. In order to create and deliver value, you need to collaborate with other functional areas within an, uh, an organization. You need to collaborate with supply chain management uh, function. You need to collaborate with accounting and finance, human resources, and, and other uh, function within an organization. But also, we, sometimes we also need to collaborate with other organizations outside your organization. And that is where you have to engage in management of relationships. So with respect to management of digital marketing, there are two aspects that you have to consider. And that is strategy and planning, and then management of uh, relationships. So what objectives do we want to achieve by implementing digital marketing? We have four uh, main objectives that we want to achieve. First is we want to achieve uh, cost reduction and value chain uh, efficiencies. We know that profit is the uh, difference between the revenue and the cost. So we want to implement digital marketing in a way that we can reduce the costs that are involved with respect to acquisition of customers, conversion of customers, and retention of customers. But also we want to use digital marketing to increase revenue that you are company will generate. And also, we use digital marketing to strengthen uh, the channel partnership that we know in order to deliver a value, we many other organizations will be involved. We will interact with other uh, business firms. So we want to use digital marketing, digital uh, technologies to strengthen our relationship with other channel uh, members. And finally, we want to improve uh, our communications and branding. So these are things we, we will discuss in, in detail as we go along uh, the lecture. So like any other uh, uh, st strategy process, we usually have uh, uh, objectives. And in order to achieve these objectives, you need to have a plan. And this is what it takes when you are doing digital marketing uh, planning that you have a, a certain set of objectives that you, you would like to realize and the digital marketing planning process involves creation of a plan uh, to get to those objectives to be able to achieve uh, those uh, objectives and it's uh, a very important aspect of a business uh, strategy we need to define a very clear plan on how we will achieve those uh, objectives. So we have a set of objectives, the four objectives, and now we need to have a plan on how we can achieve each one of these. And this is pretty much the, the, the focus that we have uh, today in this uh, class. Now, the process of uh, digital uh, marketing planning is very similar to the generic uh, strategy uh, framework that we saw in chapter five. Most of the elements are the same, except that in this case, we are focusing on marketing uh, functions. So it starts with uh, situation uh, analysis, and that is uh, ass in, uh, assessment of the, the, the internal resources and capabilities, as well as uh, the external forces that uh, surround your your, uh, your organization. So remember, we, 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 we talked about uh, uh, sort analysis, uh, analysis of strength and weaknesses of your organization, 
uh, opportunities and threats that you are facing. Strengths and weaknesses are internal factors, while opportunities and threats are external uh, forces. And also, you need to set objectives, just like in the generic strategy uh, framework, that you have to uh, define what is it that you want to, to achieve with respect to marketing. And then you need to define how do you want to achieve this. And that's where the strategy is. But this is a broad description. You need to be much more uh, specific by defining tactics, that exactly how do you want to achieve your options. Now, we know that having a plan without uh, actions or plan without, uh, without action remain uh, a mere wish. So finally, you want to define specific actions. What is it actually you do in order to uh, achieve your objectives? And after implementation of your, uh, your, your actions, you need to control, that is to monitor the, the results and compare to the objectives to see whether you have achieved what you had uh, uh, intended or not. And if you, are, you haven't achieved, what have been the, 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 the problems? So the, the process, the cycle is almost the same. And this is expected to be an ongoing process to, to an organization. Because as we said during the uh, strategy uh, lecture, that the business environment is very turbulent. Things are changing too fast. So you need to keep it a, a continuous process. So the first stage is uh, situation uh, analysis, and that involves uh, analysis of the environment and review of the internal processes and resources in order to create a, a strategy. And it's comprised of six uh, components. That is assessment of the opportunities and threats. You need to consider the slave fa factors uh, we, we discussed. Uh, it's chapter four, where you assess the social, uh, legal, economic, political, and technological factors that affect your, your organization. And you need to do resource analysis, that the resource that you have. And that is human resource, uh, financial resources, and technological resources. So you need to establish the, the profile of these resources, the status. What do you have? What are you uh, lacking? And then you need to make a demand analysis, as we discussed in uh, uh, business uh, strategy uh, approach, where you have to assess the existing customers that you have and potential customers, that individuals that you may attract or that may buy uh, your products. And then, of course, you need to make assessment of your uh, competitors, that is, the rivals who are operating in the same uh, market space. What are their strengths and what are their weaknesses? We, we will go into detail to each one of these. And finally, you have to assess you the intermediary analysis, that is, the, the different uh, organizations that are helping to get your products out to the uh, customers. So these are the inputs. Uh, to the digital marketing plan. The results of each one of these, all the analysis you're performing, the results of each one of these will feed into the digital marketing plan. The sort of, this is an example of a sort of analysis that is uh, analysis of strength, weaknesses, opportunities, and threats. This, this has been done for um, an a, a hypothetical uh, company. So the opportunities and threats are on this side. And at the top, you have strength and weaknesses. So these are the internal uh, factors that uh, you have. And these are external uh, factors, how you can uh, take advantage of the opportunities and how you can uh, counteract in order to overcome the, the, the uh, threats and how you can use your strength, and of course, how you can take measures to reduce the, the, the impact of the weaknesses that your organization has. So this is pretty much the same as when we discuss about business uh, strategy. So you do almost the same thing when it comes to marketing planning. So 
we also have to do uh, demand analysis, and that is uh, assessment of uh, existing and potential customers. And there are a couple of questions that you need to ask yourself with respect to demand uh, marketing. And here we are talking about uh, online business. So we are mostly focusing on, on how we can reach customers online. And one of the questions that uh, you have to ask yourself is how many customers or what percentage of customers have access to, to the internet? Because this is the main channel that we are concerned with uh, at the moment. So you want to know how many of these existing or potential customers have access uh, to the internet. That is the medium through which you can reach them. And also, you have to consider in case of uh, business uh, uh, customers, what percentage of members of the buying decision in these businesses have access to the internet. Today, most of we can consider that almost all organizations, especially in the developed world, have access to the uh, internet. The question is still somehow relevant, but as days go on, internet becomes very obvious thing. So almost everyone in the organization has uh, access to, be, uh, to the internet. But of course, you can just assess to be sure if the assumption you're making is correct or not. And then having uh, access to the internet is not uh, uh, sufficient for people to buy. You also need to have uh, the will. We know there are so many people that have access to the internet, but they, are, they hesitate to buy things online. So you have to assess with the kind of product you have, what percentage of customers will be prepared to purchase uh, uh, online? And then you have to ask yourself, uh, what percentage of customers w with access to the internet are not prepared to purchase online, but are influenced by web-based information to buy products offline? So we know also there are customers that search for information online, but they buy offline. And these are customers that you have to, to assess because in a way they are potential customers to your, to your organization. And based on the figures that you obtain here, you can decide to create a multi-channel uh, strategy that in, in addition to the uh, internet uh, as a channel, you can also come up with uh, offline uh, channels to reach such customers who are searching information online but they prefer to buy uh, offline. And then you have to consider the, the popularity of different online uh, customer engagement devices such as Web2 features such as blogs online communities and rich site summaries. Now, today we have so many uh, options that you can use to interact with customers, be it uh, social media platforms such as Facebook, Twitter, and others, blogs, online communities. So you need to assess for each one of these uh, options, which one is rele relevant for your uh, business, and which one is uh, popular, of course, because in the end, as I said earlier, that we want to reach customers. So we want to find a platform where you can reach as many customers as uh, possible. And this has to do with popularity uh, of the uh, platforms. And lastly, you have to consider the, the, the various uh, barriers of adoption among the uh, customers, whether it is security uh, issues, trust issues, but you need to uh, ask yourself, what is it that uh, prevents uh, people from engaging with your, uh, your platform or the kind of uh, product that you are, you are trying to introduce? I, I was watching a, an interview last week of um, Jack Ma. Jack Ma is the, the founder of uh, Alibaba. And they asked him one of the challenges that he faced when he was trying to introduce Alibaba in China. And in China, businesses is done pretty much based on relationships. So when it comes to online businesses, trust is a big issue because people are used to doing businesses based on personal relationships. So he had to come up with measures that will give people confidence to transact uh, online. And that is the reason why he came up with the Alipay. It's, uh, 
kind of uh, escrow account where you have a third part managing mm -hmm. uh, the funds transfer and mm -hmm. the payment is not done unle uh, until the product is delivered to the uh, customers. But those measures were part of the situation analysis, like considering the Chinese uh, market environment and how people are transacting, he had to come up with uh, measures that would overcome the barriers that he thought his business would face. And this is uh, applicable to any other business. There could be some uh, barriers in the market that you want to operate and you need to assess these barriers and uh, come up with measures to circumvent, uh, go around uh, these measures. Now, there are different ways you can assess demand. So we, we talked about uh, assessment of uh, existing and uh, prospect uh, for your business, existing customers and potential customers. One of the ways that uh, today uh, we have is uh, assessment of demand through uh, search engines. And that could be by uh, establishing the profile of search terms, uh, customers, use when they are looking for uh, products. So you can look at uh, through Google Analytics, Google provide uh, very powerful uh, tools when it comes to assessment of search terms. So through uh, assessment of search terms, that is assessment of which uh, words customers use to get to your website, you can uh, create what we call a share of uh, search and this will help you to decide which words you can include in your search engine optimization, that the words that will help you to increase the visibility of your business in the uh, internet. But also by assessing the search terms that customers uh, use, you can establish the potential uh, demand uh, available. By looking at what people are looking for in the internet, you can tell what is what are they looking for? And that can help you to uh, establish uh, demand. And, but these uh, search engine uh, analytics tools uh, provide mostly quantitative uh, data. So it is also important to provide, to also come up with some qualitative data. And this will give you in-depth understanding of, uh, uh, of what your uh, customers are looking for. And this could be in terms of uh, online uh, survey, conducting focus uh, groups, uh, in-depth interviews, online uh, forums, assessment of uh, interaction and conversations of uh, customers in online uh, communities, and information that you obtain from qualitative uh, studies such as these can help you to establish a persona. And a persona is a typical customer for your business for your products that is how would a, what would uh, your a typical customer for your business looks like you know, their profile what are their interests their needs how do they uh, buy products they are buying uh, behavior but also you can establish a customer scenario that specific uh, scenarios where you, the customers or a typical customer of your business would purchase uh, the, the products uh, from your uh, your site. So next to demand analysis, you also need to assess your co competitors. Just as for a general business strategy, when it comes to marketing strategy, you also need to assess uh, the rivals that you are, you, are, you are facing. And these are people that you are Compa competing with for the attention uh, of the customers. And here there are a number of issues that you, you need to uh, consider. One is you need to review internal uh, capabilities of your organization. Before you can fight an enemy, you need to know how capable you are, and that is the internal uh, capabilities. And this is done for uh, anyone that is facing a rival, whether uh, it's an army or in business, we always have to assess the rivals that we are facing. And when we are, we are facing, we have, we have first to look into the, our own uh, uh, abilities. So look at the resources you have, look at the capabilities uh, you have. 
And based on that, you can compare or benchmark to what the, uh, the river or the competitor uh, has. And then you need to consider the value proposition, that what benefits are you offering to the customers as opposed compared to what your uh, competitor uh, is offering. So you are making a reason why would customer uh, buy from you and not from your competitor, or why a customer would buy from the competitor and not uh, from you. So you have to compare the value proposition of your business and that of the uh, competitor. And then you need to consider the different aspects of the customer life cycle. That is how your competitors uh, acquire their customers, uh, how they convert the customers, and how they retain their customers, and compare to what you are uh, doing in your business. How do you acquire customers as opposed to what your uh, competitors are, are doing, and whether the approach you are using is different from theirs, and which one is better than the, the, the other. Of course, you need to have to, to make a, a, qualitative, a quantitative assessment, and that is assessment of the market share, how much do you have, how much the, your competitors uh, uh, have, the revenue, your cost structure, what is it makes a difference between your business and from that of the, uh, the businesses. Of course, some of this uh, information can be obtained from, say, annual reports of your your competitors, for, for instance, their financial reports or their tax uh, submissions, but also there are marketing intelligence organizations that are providing this type of services that can help you to conduct intelligence on your uh, competitors. But besides uh, your competitors within the market you're operating, sometimes we can face threats from businesses that are operating outside the industry that you are, uh, you are operating. So you also need to, to consider potential threats that may come from other uh, businesses that can serve as substitutes to, for, to your uh, products. Of course, pay spe uh, specific attention to financial, but also non-financial uh, measures such as Innovation within uh, to how do your competitors uh, undertake uh, innovation? How do they uh, accumulate knowledge? So these are some of the non-financial uh, measures, but they have implication when it comes to competitiveness uh, within uh, a business. Or how, for instance, they save their uh, customers, the level of customer service that they provide uh, to their uh, customers. And besides doing it internally, you can also consult experts, and that is consulting firms and other organizations that can help you perform uh, evaluation of your business as opposed to uh, that of your competitors. Besides uh, competitors, you also need to assess uh, intermediaries, and that is the organizations that are helping getting your products to the to the customers. And these are different channels uh, members. It could be uh, search engines, it could be uh, online by publishers, it could be social media uh, networks. But you need to assess each of these uh, intermediaries that are relevant to your uh, organization and ask yourself these three important questions. First, uh, whether competitors have any special uh, sponsorship arrangements. And that is, sometimes your competitors can enter into exclusive arrangements with these uh, intermediaries. And that is, when, if that is the only means through which you can get to the cu customers, it means any exclusive uh, arrangements between the, that intermediary and your competitor will literally eliminate you from the market or at least will preclude you from reaching those uh, customers. So you need to assess the type of arrangements that your uh, competitors have entered with the intermediary. And of course, if need be, you can move first and enter those type of uh, uh, arrangements with those intermediaries so as to prevent your, uh, your competitors from having a uh, relationship with those intermediaries. 
But another question is to what extent are competitors using this intermediation or reintermediation? That is, to what extent they sell their products directly to customers, or to what extent they have introduced other distribution channels uh, in their supply chain. And finally, how our existing channel arrangements can be changed. So you have to make a cost-benefit an analysis of the channels that uh, you have and find ways whether digital technologies can help you restructure the channels that uh, uh, you have, whether it is uh, in the best interest of your business to keep the channels that you have today or you have to modify. And finally, with respect to situation analysis, we have to conduct what we call uh, internal marketing uh, audits. And this is a specific assessment of the capabilities of the resources of the company, such as people, processes, and technology to deliver the digital marketing uh, goals as compared to your uh, competitors. So as I said, in order to create value, an organization has to have uh, resources that can be combined. And these resources in this, uh, at this stage have to be assessed. So whether it's uh, the people that are working for your organization, you have to assess their competence, their skills, and compare to what your competitors have. Whether your competitors have people that have similar skills to what you have, whether they have business processes that are similar uh, to yours, and of course, you have to compare the superiority of what you have as opposed to uh, what your competitors uh, have. And this uh, goes also to technology, that the type of uh, uh, technology uh, you have, whether it's uh, the, the digital, uh, the, the, the infrastructure, whether it's hardware, uh, software, kind of uh, networks that uh, you are using, how do they fare compared to what your uh, competitors have? Because the principle is, first you need to achieve effectiveness. And that is, you need at least to have the best practices in your industry. So that will give you a ticket to get into the market. If you cannot deliver at least what other people are delivering, then you will not be able to survive in the market. So this is the first condition. You need to have a a business that is able to meet the minimum standards that the best practices within an organization, uh, within an, uh, an industry or a market. But that is, is not enough. In order to stand out of the crowd, you need to create a competitive advantage. That is, you need to distinguish yourself from the rest within that uh, market. And this is what we are trying to, to do, that you are moving from operational effectiveness that is implementing best practices in your market to distinguishing yourself from the rest uh, uh, of businesses within that uh, market. And you cannot do that unless you compare the resources uh, you have, the activities you, uh, that you are engaging with, with those of your uh, competitors. And by making that assessment, then you, you can come up with a strategy on how you can distinguish yourself from the rest uh, in the market space. So basically, internal marketing uh, audit will consider these uh, three uh, aspects, and that is uh, business uh, effectiveness, that is the current uh, practice, the current uh, resources, and how we use uh, these resources. And that is what I, I said about uh, meeting the minimum conditions for uh, for you to, to play in that market. And then you need to have a, a, a ticket to stay, not just to play, a ticket to stay and distinguish yourself from the rest within uh, that uh, market. So you have to look at the business uh, effectiveness, and then you have to look at uh, marketing effectiveness, whether your, uh, the resources, the activities you are doing uh, help you to achieve uh, the marketing uh, goals, and that could be whether sales, uh, cost of acquiring new customers, retention, market share, all these are variables that you can consider when it comes to assessment of whether you're, you are achieving the marketing goals uh, of your organization or not. 
and finally you have to assess the internet's uh, effectiveness because usually when we employ uh, digital technologies in, the, in this case when we use internet as a channel to reaching customers we expect uh, to achieve some results so you have to assess whether the internet is helping you to uh, achieve those uh, results that you expected or not so after conducting situation analysis we move to the next stage of digital marketing planning and that is setting uh, objective and this is uh, quite uh, obvious that it, uh, in order to come up with a strategy you need to have to define uh, objectives uh, you need to know what you want to achieve and then you can come up with a plan on how you you can achieve so just like in digital business strategies that we discuss in chapter five in marketing uh, uh, digital marketing planning we also have to define uh, objectives and usually it's a very uh, effective way of defining strategy by combining the results of the situation uh, analysis that you did to the specific objectives that you, you would like uh, to, to achieve. So for instance, uh, during the situation uh, analysis, you found out that currently you have 40,000 sales uh, per year. And based on this, you are establishing a new objective, that the objective is to increase it to 50,000 uh, uh, sales uh, per year. So the new objective is based on the information that you acquired during the uh, situation analysis. And this helps you to create realistic goals. By analyzing the current situation, then you can realistically uh, plan or set a goal uh, of what to achieve, where to move on from where you are uh, to the next uh, stage. And this can be done pretty much across all the functions that we, we, we have uh, uh, discussed. And that is from acquisition, that how many uh, new customers do you want to attract, convention, uh, yeah, co convention and that is uh, out of those that visit your, for instance, uh, website, how many do you want to convert into, uh, into customers? And this is based on what you have uh, found. So for instance, the goal here is, uh, the objective is set based on the current uh, situation, which is uh, 35 uh, uh, pounds. The book is based on the UK uh, information, including the, the, the currents. But of course, it could be Norwegian crowns. So, the main point is whatever information that you obtain from situation analysis, that will be useful input to setting objectives for your uh, business strategy. So this is uh, the same, uh, the findings of the situation analysis and the new uh, goals. And these are specific activities that you can perform to uh, achieve those objectives. We, we will discuss this uh, uh, separately l later on. Yeah, likewise uh, here. But this is a different approach to setting objective. And this uses the, the, the balance scorecard uh, approach where you divide your goals into four main uh, aspects of the business. That is financial results, customer value, operational processes, innovation, and learning. So based on your situation analysis, you establish objectives for each of these four uh, aspects of your business. So what do you want to achieve financially? How do you want to save your uh, customers? How do you want to improve your operational process? And how do you want to increase innovation and learning of your organization? So these are just frameworks to help you how to set up your, uh, to come up with objectives for your organization. Of course, each organization will have different uh, objectives. And that's why we have uh, the main framework that you can use for your particular uh, 
business. And this was uh, uh, part two of your uh, last assignment, where you have to come up with objectives for mm -hmm. your b that are relevant for your uh, for your business across those four uh, aspects of the of your organization. So, after setting the, the objectives, the next stage is to come up on how we can achieve those objectives. And I think we can have a break and continue after 15 minutes.